the first video I showed you how to do a factory default of your device and then how to do an initial setup um, and we went through how to, how to set up the interface static routes um, how to create the net rules the access rules and so on and so forth how to create objects so we kind of went through that in this video we're going to show you I'm going to show you how to do a how to do VPN tunnels so if you had if you have other Cisco devices um, other router or other ASA appliance and you want to create a VPN tunnel to it uh, I'll show you how to set up a VPN tunnel on your end so let's get started the first thing we'll do is we'll click on wizard we'll click on SSL VPN I'm, I'm sorry IPsec VPN wizard here we're going to do site to site VPN so we're going to do one from one site to another you know you use this if you have partners partnerships with other companies other co-locations uh, you've acquired other companies and you need to create a VPN so you can uh, import their information and consolidation and so on and so forth so that's where these uh, VPN tunnels will come in handy so we'll go ahead and do a site to site VPN the VPN tunnel interface is going to be the outside interface because obviously that's where it's going to come through and we're going to hit next here it's asking for the remote IP address of that location so the IP location I'll just make one up but in your case you already have one set up you'll know what you're connecting to so in our case we'll say 99.15.20.33 whatever I'm just making this up okay the pre-shared key and this is the, the the this is a secret key that's that needs to be mutually agreed upon and so you want to make sure that um, this key is going to be the same key that's going to be inputted on the other end to make that connection so between you and the other network administrator this is going to be the general key that you both use or if you're going to be setting up both locations then you need to input the same device so I'll call it test uh, Cisco is a percent 23 whatever you know that's the key that I'll make up hit next different types of encryption method that you can use um, and it kind of tells you up here what type of encryption algorithm go with the default um, just leave everything as is hit next what type of rules you want to follow so you want to go ahead and leave this as default but uncheck this um, it says perfect forwarding secrecy we don't want that so uncheck that but leave everything else as is hit next now here's asking for which networks are going to be um, included in this VPN tunnel uh, basically which networks are protected so the local network you're going to click on and that's going to be your local inside network here the 192.168 you can double click as you can see it adds it here click OK now it wants to know what is the external uh, remote internal network that's going to be exempted um, so you're going to click on here now remember if you remember from part one we created these two internal networks that for our DR locations um, and, that's, and I said it's going to be these are going to be the internal location used for VPN tunnels and that's why I inputted the internal IP and not the external so we'll go with our first DR location and here it wants to know on what interface are this this is going to be used now because we're not going to set this on the outside interface by default it's smart enough to know oh this is the inside interface and so we'll, you know we're going to make sure this stays on the inside now if you have a bigger appliance the 5510 and so on and so forth then obviously you want to make sure that the right interface is chosen so we're going to leave inside hit next hit finish now it's finished now one now it's reminding you that it's not written to the flash yet the running config so we need to click on save to save this to our running config okay so now the VPN tunnel is pre-positioned on our end 
and to verify it we'll go back to net rules and here now you'll see that it created a an exemption for us here under net rule so automatically creates a net exemption for you so the internal network is set to the external network so you can you can create net exemptions for, uh, right down to the network level and it created that for us going outbound access rule not not really anything has changed because we it's not it has nothing to do with going in and out so that's still the same so now we created our VPN tunnel or at least pre-positioned it on our end now we'll click on tool I'm sorry wizard IPsec site to site leave this as outside we're gonna set up our secondary location whatever the uh, pre-shared key is hit next leave this as it hit next make sure you uncheck this hit next same thing your internal network and your external network make sure it, it's you're setting it on the pro appropriate network the interface hit next finish save apply changes okay and you can see now it created the secondary dr2 for us exemption for us so now we're good to go also you can verify this further by clicking on site to site vpn and you'll, you'll see it here that it created the, the two different remote locations for us and it and these are the different interfaces you can write you can double click them and you can see the different encryption protocols that it's using the remote and the internal IP addresses, the pre-shared key, all this information is, is set up for us. And it actually set, uh, created a default group policy. You can leave that as is. It actually creates a, uh, it, it creates other uh, policies also um, for each IP address. It creates its own group. So as you can see, it created the um, two VPN tunnels on our end for us. It pre-positioned it, as you can see it here. Um, you can also click on Advanced and click on Crypto Maps, and then it kind of goes in and tell you um, further, shows you the Crypto Maps as to how it's set up, the peer, the protocol, what's protected, different locations. Uh, and subsequently, you know, if you're going to delete them, you're going to do it right here also. One by one, you need to go through and delete them. But this is how it's set up. Uh, the tunnel groups, remember there's a default group that is created. And then for each, as I said, for each location, it creates a group. So you, so you need to verify all this, just make sure everything is set. Which, you know, majority of the time, it's once you go through the initial setup of VPN tunnel, then it's set for you. You don't really need to verify, but it's a good thing good to know where those things these things are all right so now the pre, the tunnels are pre-positioned on our end and then if you have another device just like this that's going to be used to pre-position the uh, to complete the tunnel then you go through the same exact process or what you do is you know if, if if you're done on your end then you email or you call the other network administrator and you say all right, the tunnel is pre-positioned, and they'll do whatever they need to, depending on what type, you know, whatever they're using, Juniper, Cisco, whatever, and they'll set the VPN tunnel on their end using that pre-shared key that's uh, that's agreed upon between the two locations. And that's it. This is how you set up a uh, VPN tunnel on a 5505, 5510, and a 5500 series. All right.